Welcome to Sailing Ruby Roads from the Seawind 1170. Now this is our friends Billy and Sierra's boat and the little sister to the 1370. So whereas we are 13 meters 70, 45 foot, this is 11 meters 70, just under 40 foot. This is a very, very interesting boat because it's kind of a shrunken version of ours, but there's a lot of the same features. So let's get on board, have a really good look and see what we can see. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. So let's start with the cockpit. Again, it's all so familiar to me. We have these dual helms, so twin helms. We also have smaller, but yet very similar seesawing helm seats. Now, we can attest that both those are very, very, very useful. On the 1170, the it, actually twin helms is optional. The standard boat has one has one helm seat. Again, it's all so familiar. We have nice big comfortable helm seat, same footrest as we have on the 1370. Also, we can look outboard, really nice clear side decks and the windows that we have. Whereas on the 1370, they are electrical. These are actually just pull out and stow in a dedicated stowage bin. Handrails, we have big handrails up there, grab rails there, something that we have already identified on our boat for Teresa, who is of diminutive stature. Can I reach these though? No, I cannot. <laughs> But we have the signature trifold door, which is obviously goes up, comes down, gives you different areas. And yes, it gives you that whole indoor outdoor area. So it's a really, really good use of space. We have dedicated line bins. These do not have the fiberglass tops that we have, but still everything is being stowed away. As with the 1370, underneath these big helm seats, well in this case, actually we've got the propane locker. So there's a, uh, the, line stowage there and propane so we'll have a self-draining gas locker there again something very signature sea wind tough and safety glass windows so that you can see the sails and all i would say to you on that is that while these are great you do need to stick your head out meerkat style to really get a good look when you're setting those sails aft facing we have a bench seat the barbecue is a is a standalone magma and different than the 1370 is that the davits here are mounted in the hard top, not a dedicated davit system. Okay, so one thing, we've got quite a big step here to get over into the saloon, and yeah. again... I tripped on that a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, so basically the saloon, one thing that you are gonna notice very, very quickly is that this is a galley down boat. So what we have here is this huge, very, very big C-shaped settee area. This gives you the option to drop this table into a day bed. And again, there is a cushion that kind of like puts all that in place. So for the off watch, you can actually put it down, sleep here. And again, it's a very, very comfortable area. Also importantly for the off watch, if you are sleeping there, you can see the helm. And that is important to make sure that when you are shorthanded or if you are shorthanded sailing, you have clear line of sight if you ever need to get up or keep a watch on your on your crew. So that's very good. Something that came through from the 1260 is these modular Ottomans. And again, they move around. They're all kind of shaped so that you can turn that into a nice little chaise long there or push it alongside and just have it as an additional seating for your dining table. I think getting eight round that would not be an issue. By putting the galley down, you do save a lot of space. Now, let us bang on about something which Teresa will be going on about is these big opening hatches. Again, they are Lumar tough and glass, very, very similar to the ones we have on River Rose 2, but again, for ventilation, getting these two windows open and then this big trifold door, you are gonna have an insane amount of airflow. So ventilation is really not gonna be a problem problem here. The nav station here is it's longitudinally mounted so not forward facing and there's no nav chair but again what you're looking at is a, a sub 40 foot boat so the compromise here is we can't squeeze a nav desk in here. For long passages some people I personally would want something which is forward facing but this is what we have this is what we're given. Everything is C-zone so I'm assuming there's a lithium battery bank here so a C-zone 5 inch unit the Vespa Cortex uh, VHF. B&G, again, it's a whole full B&G system, and then they've got the manual breakers for, uh, that will be for the DC, the AC. 
bilge pumps, lots of other bits there. So up here, as you guys know, we are a huge fan of this massive seating area. I mean, on what other 40 foot catamaran do you get this much seating up above? The reason you get that space is because the galley is down. So let's go down and see what the galley is like. This galley, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I think it's bigger than our galley on this 1370. It is huge. For and keep in mind that this is a sub 40 foot catamaran. This is a really, really large galley. We've got a lot of bench space. We've got a fridge here. We've got loads of storage below, you know, cupboards and shelves. We've got drawers. And we've also got these upper cabinets, which of course we don't have on the 1370 and some extra storage along here. So loads and loads of storage and we haven't even talked about the storage here, which is where I think they keep their mockery. This looks like a freezer. Yes, big freezer, double sink, gas stove, I think a gas oven as well. Another thing that I hear people say quite often about galley downs is that they don't like them because they feel like they're really enclosed and they're away from all the action. Obviously there is an element of that, but I don't think that that is really the vibe here. You can see that there's actually like a lot of open space between the galley and the saloon area. So it's actually quite easy to communicate and you don't feel like you're closed in. It's very bright and light in here. You've also got this massive window and also an opening hatch for ventilation. So I actually think that this is a really nice area area to be doing your food preparation. Obviously in a seaway, some people say, look, I get quite seasick. I don't want to be down uh, when we're underway because it's going to make me feel ill. And I get that. Um, I feel like because you've got so much light coming in here and you've got access, kind of visual access to the outside world, perhaps that wouldn't be such an issue, but it's obviously a consideration. One thing that is good about these galleys is that because it's like a linear galley, you actually can hold on there's fiddles on these um, bench tops so you can actually hold on and you're quite well protected in here um, if you're in a seaway you're not going to get thrown over to the other side of the boat or anything like I did once on Ruby Rose that's a whole other story I think that if you're thinking about a 40 foot catamaran I can't think of any other model that would have a galley this big and obviously because the galley's down here you get a lot of space up there for seating and lounging and living the Playoff, of course, is that you lose a little bit of space in your hull and you don't have as much space for guests. Whether that's an issue for you, only you can tell me. So let's go and see what the guest quarters are like. So this is the forward cabin and this bed, as you can see, runs kind of in line with the, the hull. This is very similar to the 1370. It's the same kind of setup. Slightly smaller, of course, but essentially the same. We've got uh, the heads in the bow. So I can't see a separate shower, so we've just got a tap that pulls out. We've got a heads behind me here, and then we've got a locker that obviously, oh, okay, what's this? I think that's a holding tank. Only a small amount of storage below the sink. Yeah, so storage, this is very small heads for your guests. I guess you have to decide yourself whether that's something that you're happy with or not, but this is a compromise for having that massive galley. So this is the aft cabin, of course. It is quite small, I'm not gonna lie. It's, I mean, you could fit two people in here, but I would say it's probably more of a single berth. You've got a little bit of ventilation, not a great amount. You've got a small hatch there and also a side opening hatch here. And you've also only got a very small amount of storage. What's underneath the bed? Yeah, no storage underneath the bed. You've got a tank there instead. And uh, yeah, so this is a pretty basic aft cabinet, similar to the 1160 and the 1260. Um, no real updates here. Okay, so now we've seen obviously the starboard side galley. We've seen the guest cabin. We've seen the aft cabin. Let us go down into the master cabin, which is what we are going to see on the port side. So follow me down. So again, this is very, very reminiscent of Rurus 2. On the inboard side here, we have a lot of lockers. This is plant machinery. So in this one, for instance, it says the C-Zone. There are the batteries, there's the inverters, so all the plant machinery is kept here. On the outboard side, we have a lot of stowage. So there's a lot of things, brilliant here as film gear. Let us move forward into the master cabin. I must have slept here last night. So again, we've got this big kind of transverse mounted bed, which is over the bridge deck. Very, very similar to our own boat. There is a hatch up there and a hatch up there. So we've got two opening hatches, lots of ventilation, lovely shades down here. And again, really nice area is very, very reminiscent of our own boat, possibly a little bit lower. The boat is smaller, so there's not as much of a leap to get up into your bed. Moving four again. 
we have stowage and then a hanging locker and again that hatch up there gives you a lot of ventilation because Siemens hatches are all forward facing so what you do get is a lot of air coming through. One final thing I do want to show you I want us to move into the aft heads and let us go and have a look at that. Okay, so aft heads. Again, we have a full standing shower cubicle here. The water maker controls are actually in the tank. That's an old one. We have electric flushing heads there, a lovely integrated sink, and one opening hatch. It's a compact bathroom. I think they call it Bijou. Can someone in America please tell me where you get your amazing bath mats? We have found that the USA does some things better than any other country in the world, and bath mats are definitely one of them. But I do want to show you the deck because the deck is something I think you really do want want to see okay so the deck of the 1170 this is it's almost identical to our boat it looks the same like the layout is identical so we've got two princess seats over there viewing seats are great we have full flush mounted hatches and like the very curved jib track if you look at our other reviews like to maximize cell performance of that jib you need a curved jib track big storage lockers here so you've got storage lockers for your lines the windlass and there will be a central locker here Oh, there's a windlass in there. So they've got that big locker there. All of Billy's kiteboarding gear. So sail plan, we've obviously got the jib there, the blade jib, 95% jib, followed by the screecher. Again, really important for light airs. And on top of that, after that, we have the carbon fiber bow sprit for taking the big asymmetric. Looking back at the coach roof, again, lots of capacity for solar, all done in that two-tone gray. And that gives you a lot of really easy access to the mast, for sail handling, for sail tidying and the like. So let's just see how easy that is to get up. So yeah, one step to get up really really nice very reminiscent of what we have in thailand so what did you think sea wind 1170 smaller version of ours or a craft in its own right i personally think under 40 foot difficult to beat this performance space and good build quality leave us your comments down below obviously we are biased because we are working with sea wind but let us know what you think but also give us a like give us a thumbs up we're going to be doing a few more cat reviews the last cat reviews we did were in 2020 before covid a lot more has come onto the market now and you've been asking for them so you're going to get a few of these sprinkled into our into our canon of work anyway we'll see you again next week take care goodbye